tell us about uh, Team Novo Nordisk? Yeah, it's very special. So uh, Team Novo Nordisk is the world's first all diabetes professional cycling team. Um, I'm proud to be the first British rider for. And I've just come from uh, meeting Peter Kenner over at the Tour de France viewing area. He's Isle of Man, Mark Cavendish Isle of Man, your Isle of Man. What's going on? What are the mums drinking over there? Well, I don't know. It's just uh, that fresh Frank's air, I think. So it's uh, a great place to ride. The terrain's up and down all the time. Strong winds, brutal winters, you know, it's just a great place to ride. But is it just a coincidence or is there a really lively uh, cycling scene for kids and competitive, competitive as well? Yeah, there's an extremely live, like, for youngsters it's a brilliant, there's a huge setup over there to um, welcome kids into cycling. Uh, it's not the route I went through, uh, but there is a huge presence of cycling on the Isle of Man. Uh, there's really not much else to do, so it's uh, cycling. So, I mean, type A diabetes, at, at the moment, it's not preventable, it's a hereditary genetic thing. W when were you diagnosed? Yeah, it's an autoimmune condition. I was diagnosed at 10 years old, so um, I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, I always say to people that it's the best thing that ever happened to me, and I stand by that. You might think I'm crazy, but at 10 years old, I developed a routine that has now got me to where I am. And, and so cycling came afterwards, because we've met some of your colleagues that were diagnosed at 17, but they're already very, very sporty and actually into cycling, but you've come into cycling after your diagnosis. Yeah, so uh, I didn't really do much at 10 years old. I was keen sportsman. I then uh, grew up in my teens. I was uh, a footballer. I moved from football to sort of endurance sports, uh, which made no sense because I was a goalkeeper when I played football. Uh, you a cross-country runner? I was a cross-country runner, so I went, moved into long-distance running, um, national champion in the twice, um, so big engine. And then I went to university, I um, was then a triathlete, I raced twice age group worlds uh, for Great Britain. I then um, raced uh, for Team Nova Nordisk on the, elite ta on the elite team, so I was a triathlete for them. They asked me in 2016 to join the development team. So after 18 months of development team, they offered me a pro contract. And so uh, really, really fast two and a half years. It's kind of been from here to way up here. And, and what should we be looking out for tomorrow? What are your thoughts individually and uh, as part of the team for the Classic? Uh, individually, I want to be aggressive. Um, this is the first time Team Nova Nova has been raced in Britain since 2015. Uh, it's the first time I'll get to race in Britain as part of Team Nova Nordisk. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking to be aggressive. The team's looking to be aggressive. Uh, I want to show we're not here to make up the numbers. We're here to show how hard we can race and uh, do it to inspire, educate, and empower those affected by diabetes. Have you, have you got family, friends coming to see you? Yeah, so my parents are coming down. They're somewhere, I don't know if they're in here, but uh, I actually forgot to tell them I was doing this, so <laughs> they're probably not here yet. And have it. On, on a, in a cycle race where you're whizzing past spectators at 30, 40 miles an hour, do you, does it register with you? Do you hear individual voices? Do you, does it make a difference to your mood and, and your motivation? I think um, normally it's just one big blur, but when your mum's screaming at you, it's a bit different, isn't it? So, you hear your mum? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, if I heard her shouting at me, it'd be like waiting for me to clean my room or something. So, uh, yeah, definitely look out for them. Definitely probably hear them, hear them shouting and screaming. And, uh, the rest of it just kind of goes by in a blur, you get your head down and stay focused. So we're now less than 20 hours away from, from the start. What's, what's your routine? What sort of things do you do between now and the start? Just try and get in the zone, but try not to overthink it. What will be, will be tomorrow. So uh, just try and prepare. There's not much I can do in terms of myself. My, all the hard work's already done. It's just trying to get yourself now prepared into that, into that zone. So it'll be chill out lie down, leg, legs up, um, just try and stay positive. You can talk yourself out of a bike race, but uh, a lot of the time, just like I say, stay focused, nap, lots of sleep and lots of eating, hydration, and uh, just uh, have fun. Hands up anybody doing 100 miles for the first time. So a lot of people, and one of the things that we've encountered this week is that many riders that are doing it first time will have done the distance but it's rare that they'll have done it in such close proximity of other riders. What, what, what's your advice on that? Uh, well, coming into cycling, as I say, in 2016, there's not, not many times in the track that you need to ride 100 miles. Um, I remember the first time I did it, and then I remember the second time I did it, and now it's almost once a week. So um, it's just, in a close proximity, it makes it go so much quicker. If you do it on your own, it 
can be brutal. But when you're doing it with people, you can have a chat, you can sit on wheels, you can just have a bit of fun, then that makes it so much better. Uh, interact with other people, it makes the time go by, and like you say, just have some fun. But, but the mistake would be to be looking down at the wheel. You do need to be looking at yeah, what's no, going up because it's... Yeah, don't look down. No, don't, don't do that. Uh, you don't, we don't want to see any crashes tomorrow, so... Uh, it's just, yeah, keep your head up. I mean, you can't talk to people with your heads down anyway, so... Uh, as I say, interact with people, stay focused, and yeah, have fun. And how do you adjust your uh, tactics if, if it's wet? So we haven't had wet weather for weeks and weeks in the UK, but we could have showers tomorrow. So what are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the hour man, it rains about nine months a year anyway, so uh, you just have to you just have to race with what's there. It's the same for everyone. Um, not sure tactics change too much in terms of us, but if you're looking to be aggressive, a good place to be is the brake work. Yeah. But softer tyres, maybe for better grip. Yeah, and like that. down pressure slightly, and uh, yeah, you just need to be a bit more vigilant. Whether you're an amateur, whether you're a professional, you do need to brake and distance changes, not too heavy on the brakes, and uh, just stay focused uh, and, and be prepared for caution. Like, there's a lot of road furniture out there, so uh, just keep an eye. There's central reservations and stuff like that. And what do you do uh, post-race? How, how many races left in your season? Have you got to maintain your discipline for eating and drinking? Of course, yeah. Discipline. We go straight to Tour of Denmark from here, so that starts on Wednesday, I think. So yeah. uh, straight on to Denmark. So uh, yeah, it's rehydrate, uh, refuel and get ready to go. And are there things that you have to pay particular attention to with your diabetes post post ride? Do you have to get your blood sugars right very quickly? Um, not too dissimilar to everybody else. Um, I don't see myself as different to any other rider. So uh, it's yeah, refuel. Uh, just make sure you're in your range. You need you are where you need to be. And everyone's different. So what I do might be different to what another rider does. So I just need to make sure that it works for me. And then it tends to be the same recovery as it is for everyone else. It is an extraordinary concept behind your team. Final question for me is, where does it go from here? Is, is, is there a role to be played in actually finding a cure, uh, changing approaches, encouraging people to live active lives with diabetes? Well, firstly, yeah, an active life with diabetes. Uh, Phil Sutherland, our co-founder, and uh, he always says that exercise is the billion dollar drug that's never prescribed. If you can stay active, then it makes life a lot easier. If you're moving around, then it takes away the need for other things, potentially, and keeps you healthy. Um, we just want to be there as a, as, a, as, a, as a point for people to show that what might be possible with diabetes. We're there, and I ride, and I ride to show other people what we can do with diabetes, and I want to be there as a platform for other people to say, well, they're doing it, why can't we? So it's encouragement, it's there as uh, role models, essentially, but uh, also there to show that there shouldn't be a negative sti uh, stigma around diabetes and, and we are just the same as everyone else. Well, we wish you well. We'll be looking out for Team Novo Nordisk Cheers. tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Sam. Thank you.